Hello and welcome to Let Me Buy You To Sleep. My name is Jason Newland and today is, well then, nope, Sunday's Papers. It's Sunday's Papers, yeah. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Although, from the looks of this, order opening. What am I doing? That's weird. I don't think. I think I've opened the wrong thing. Damn it. I'm looking at press reader, which is, I'm not actually, I don't have press reader. Read with premium. No. No. Right. So let's get out of that. So please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I'm on my tablet just looking for the papers. What do I normally use? Not press reader. What is it? Readly. Readly, that's it. Newspapers. Oh. Ah, so, you got tree, you got these. I've got no more of those treats, so Vinny. He's uh, hassling me for treats. So today is Sunday the 8th of December. Just to let you know, basic, basic stuff. Oh, no. Whenever I put in Jason, Friday the 13th always comes up. And just to let you know, my website's jasonnewland.com. I also have a Facebook group called J Jason Newland's Boring Group. My YouTube channel is at Jason Newland. My let you know the background music that I have on these recordings are from Kevin McLeod. It's called Deep Relaxation. His website is incompetech.com. Those details are on my website. Um, there's a few things on my website that are useful, but the main thing is it's now a podcast. So every day that I release a new recording, it becomes available on my website. So my website is a podcast. So it's a good place to find or listen to my stuff. You can listen. You can also listen at different speeds. You can also download the recording. And I do six different versions. Three without music, three with music. Of various lengths, from normal length, five hours and ten hours. Also on the website, you can contact me. You can write a review. There's also a Q&A Friday link where you can ask me a question for the future Q&A Friday that's all that boring stuff out of the way. Wow, has it been windy. Like, really windy. Not just a bit windy, but truly, truly windy. Not just a bit truly windy, but like proper wow. In fact, it's dropped the temperature by quite a lot. I don't think it was even cold outside, but with that wind, it was proper cold. My little hands and fingers were just, they were just moaning. <laughs> Take me back home. Yeah. It was really cold. So, <laughs> wow. 
Well, look at this. Andrex Classic Clean Washlets. 12 packs. Flushable toilet tissue wipes. £12 for 12. That's a pound each. That's pretty good. And you've got Colgate Total Original Toothpaste. 4 times 100 mil. £9. I don't know, four, so it's two pound if no, it's two, four, six, eight, so it's one twenty five each. But one hundred mil, is that big? Is that big or is it small? I don't know. I'm looking at Amazon. I need to get some socks. Did you know I haven't worn socks for nearly a year? It's true. In fact, over a year. No, nearly a year. I just remember, because I kicked the wall when I was in bed by accident. When I, I purpose, when I didn't go to kick the wall, but I did go to kick something. I think it was about January time. Maybe February, but that kind of time, probably January, February time. And I was dreaming that this thing was coming, it was chasing me. And I turned around and kicked it. I decided that actually the force of it coming towards me and then me kicking would be like double the force. So I proper kicked it. And I heard a scream. And I realised it was me screaming. <laughs> oh, I woke up and I'd broken my toe. My big toe, and wow, and maybe cracked a few other little bones in my my foot as well. I was in, yeah, you know, I was out of action for a couple of months with that stuff limping, but I couldn't get I couldn't get my socks on, so I just wore. I still had to go out because of this little one. I started to take him out multiple times a day. So I just didn't have any socks because they were too tight, too constricting, too difficult to put on. And since then, apart from visiting my dad at the end of August, or the, yeah, it was like middle of August rather, that was the only time in the entire year I think that I've worn socks. I think, although I've got a mild, a mild memory of wearing socks recently, but it's very mild and very bubbly mem memory, it's kind of, hmm, because I've got a pair of socks on a chair in the bedroom, now, it's either a recent peeling off of my feet, like, you know, I wear them socks and I just chuck them on, on the chair, otherwise I've been there since August. Which isn't long, it's only four months. The neighbours are complaining about the smell. But it's fine, it's normal. I think it's the socks. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't, why am I talking about my breaking my toe on the... Oh yeah, I'm thinking about... I noticed today that my feet were cold I'm feeling the cold a little bit more this year because I've lost weight I think that's what it is of the insulation I guess the blubber isn't keeping me as unaffected by the cold as it did last year because I've lost over a stone. Yeah. Plus, I have not shaved my head. My hair's actually getting a little bit out of uh, out of order. I have to wear a hat. Even I have to wear a hat, even if it's not cold. I have to wear a hat now because of my hair. It's getting a little bit. Mm, you know, a little bit 
Mm, it just <clears throat> needs something done to it. Now I do have brill cream. And when I look at my hair, I think about my granddad. And I'm thinking like the sides were a little bit like his hair used to get when it got a bit long. So he always used to have his hair back. And I think he used well, if your hair some kind of hair cream, whether it was brill cream, I don't know. And I used to I used to use brill cream in my I don't know what you want to call them, but my in my late twenties until my early thirties I used to use brill cream. And always had quite short hair but it had it back. And for one particular person at work when I worked in insurance, whenever he spoke to me he stared at my hairline. He just couldn't take his eyes off my hairline. Uh, okay, I'm receding a little bit. I'm not doing too bad considering my age, I don't think. I'm going to keep using that excuse until I'm 130. I'm not doing too bad. I've only pooed myself three times today. Not doing too bad for my age. 130. Wow, can you imagine? All those box sets I could watch. I get through quite a few. Yeah. So this week really, it's another ending to a week. I got, yeah, I think I got a fair bit done. I made some recordings. I don't know how many. How many recordings did I do this week? Anyone? I don't know. Oh, brilliant. Right, so the... Da, 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 da. That's weird. The old uh, logging in is it's not filling the stuff like normal. So I don't know. So I did Monday. I did Tuesday. Um, I don't even know what a password is. The problem, do you notice that? The problem with the, you know when it fills it in itself and you get so used to it filling it in, filling like the password and everything. That now I forget what the password is. Du, 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 du. I don't know. So I definitely did a Monday, definitely did Tuesday. I think I did Wednesday. Definitely did Friday. I didn't do yesterday. Right, it's not letting me log in. I don't know what my password is then. It's logged me out. Oh. That's a little bit alarming. Yeah. So, let's have a look. I did Monday. What was it Monday, 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 Monday? So I did Sunday papers last Sunday. I did, 
I did Monday, but it was uh, called I Need a Boring Objects. Not an old, it should be I Need a Boring Object, but for some reason I put objects. Tuesday, Trivia Tuesday, is at 1,248. Let me boy to sleep. Um, that's the third. Didn't do anything on Wednesday, but on Thursday, on my dating prowess, I did. And then Q&A Friday on Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. I did five out of seven days. That's not bad. It's not too bad, really. I think I did discover something the other day that I kind of knew, but... Every now and then, I get reminded. If I have too much activity, see too many people, it drains me like a real you know I mean I just had one of those days when I was getting people knocking on the door kind of probably saw about four or five different people in one day and I was just like oh it was too much Weird. I am nice to be around hundreds of people in a day when I was younger and never bothered me. Well, I'm not saying never bothered me, but it never. I didn't. I didn't seem to be affected as much by it. You know, when I was really young. Although even when I was at school, I went through periods when. I would hide I don't mean in a cupboard but I would hide and read a book so I went it was a mood thing so I went through this period when every now and then I would when I was older I could just leave school and I'd go home for, for lunch but what I did in um Was it? I I was in this. I can't remember what the room is. Was it a science room? But I was in uh, for my period room. Period room. It, you know, I forget what it's called. But had to go there at the beginning of the day, and then go back after lunch, and then go back in the in the afternoon. So it was just like red. But they do the register and stuff. I used to sit outside. There was a back door with stairs, and I used to sit out there and read Star Trek books. And people used to come and find me. Like, well, go away! This I didn't just just. I didn't want them to find me. I was hiding. I think it was confusing. It was confusing to me as well. You know, why aren't you like the? Why are you different from you were the way you was yesterday or the day before? I don't know. Oh, he's he's hungry. He's got a bit of a. He's eating his uh, dry food. Is it time you had your dinner? Would you like some pedigree chum? <laughs> or some pals? There you go. No, it's really weird. When he doesn't want it, he just turns his face away, like a stubborn child refusing to eat his broccoli. Well, I got the window open, so the neighbours are outside talking at their very highest volume. Bless them. It's weird. <laughs> there you go, Vin. Do you want that? Oh, good girl. Right, I should start the recording, really, shouldn't I? So where was I? Where am I doing? What am I doing? I was kind of trying to do a summary of today, or this week, but I can't really remember what's happened this week. 
So the Sunday Mirror, so the Sunday People, uh, okay, so that's just GK My Jungle Taka. They like to talk about TV shows like Strictly, so I can't be bothered. Rainer, so this is Deputy PM Angela Rayner will this week tell councils to build more social homes as she announces major plans to unlock the clogged up planning system. Hundreds of thousands of social rent homes were lost under the Tories, blah, blah, blah. So one around 1.3 million people are on social housing waiting list and almost 160,000 children are in temporary accommodation. Wow. They said something that they want to build 1.5 million homes, the government. They're going to build 1.5 million homes in England by 2029. Hope they do. That'd be cool. So what's that? Kevin runs to a million. Rugby league legend Kevin Sinfield has raised more than one million for people. With a former leads goes... Uh, okay, cool. So that's nice. Hire and the hair. Right. They're making fun. I should stop making fun of people, newspapers. Prince William held a private meeting with Donald Trump in Paris yesterday. The Prince of Wales, 42, who was in the city to celebrate the reopening of Notre Dame Cathedral, is believed to have discussed the importance of the UK-US special relationship with the American president-elect. He also met US First Lady Jill Biden more than... Okay, it's a separate sentence. More than one billion has been spent on refurbishing Notre Dame, which was gutted by a fire in 2019. Almost also among the 50 heads of states invited by French Premier Emmanuel Macron was Ukraine's leader Volodymyr Zelensky. Mr. Trump said Mr. Macron had done a wonderful job ensuring Notre, Notre Dame has been restored to full glory. But I don't remember when that all went up. Five years ago. So according to this, the royals spring into Christmas. The king and queen okay, have chosen a photo of themselves in the garden of Buckingham Palace to appear, to appear on their official Christmas cards. The photo taken by Millie Pilkinson, or Pilkington, in April, shows that it's not a Christmas card, is it? If it's spring, why can't you have like be making a snowman or something like that? That's that's Christmassy. It's not really Christmassy because I don't think it's ever where I've, where wherever I've lived, it's never snowed on Christmas Day. It always snows somewhere on Christmas Day, but not where I lived. There has been snow on the ground. So technically, technically, you could say that that's a white Christmas. But it hasn't actually snowed on the actual day. I think the last time it would... The other time I ever remember there being snow on Christmas Day, like I mean on the ground days, not from the sky I know it originally came from the sky but it was on the ground already before Christmas and it was in 2000 Christmas 2007 I just moved into my student accommodation place if you want to call it that and I Yeah, I moved in in the November and it was, I think it was the most snow we'd had in a long time. 
Yeah, it's a lot of snow. Because I've literally just only moved there, been there a little while, and everything was a bit new and exciting, you know. Okay, new. After nearly three long weeks of two. Because I don't know. Did did Colleen win the jungle thing? I don't know. Barry on I don't know who the jungle people are. I don't know who won. Fern to shine in jungle. I was so close to quitting. Who won? Who actually won? Anyone know? Starmer pressures to call out Gulf states on human rights. Tragic. Okay. Um, free bumper Christmas TV magazine. You know what? Years ago. And I'm talking... Probably the last time would be... in 2000 and before I had streaming before I started streaming things so I would say probably before I moved here because when I moved here I got Sky never had Sky before and suddenly I had all these channels and it was pretty cool but I've got loads of channels anyway now I've got Freeview and stuff But before that, so that was 2015, so I reckon 2014 Christmas was the last time I got the TV times. Because you got the radio times, I, th I think they're still available, the radio times and the TV times. And at Christmas they do, I think they do two weeks worth of TV. And in the past, it would just be the four channels, well, five channels from 97 onwards. It was five channels. And it was easier to maneuver because, you know, just five channels. Now, I, th I sort of post all the different channels, so it's quite hard, I think. I think. But I haven't bought one for years because there's no need. Especially now, I suppose it's good to know what to. Blimey, it's probably yeah. Police are in the. I don't know if it's a police or an ambulance in the background. Tasha feels like she's won already. This is Tasha Guri in Strictly Come. Dancing. I don't watch that show. Jason Beatty. Just have a look. Rugby legend. Kev storms it. Rugby legend Kevin Sinfield battles Storm Dara. Because we name our storms now. Uh, to compete. To complete his 230 mile nationwide run yesterday to raise funds for charity. 230 miles. Because the thing is, it, we're such a tiny country. You can run from one end of the country in about half an hour. We're tiny, honestly. <laughs> Blimey, I can't run. I wouldn't even run for the bus. I had an opportunity recently to run for the bus and I didn't take it because I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure. You know, I was waiting for a bus and then I went around the corner and thought I'll try and get a different bus. There's more buses go past that bus stop. And as I crossed the road, the bus went past me and it did stop. And not only was someone getting off, someone was waiting to get on. 
and I would have needed to run for probably 10 seconds and I wasn't sure yeah I wasn't I wasn't confident in my ability to it's not it's not just it's not just a fitness thing it's just when I run I look like a dolphin trying to break dance it's it's not a good it's not a good sight it's really not what we got here oh god blimey so warm home tops wish list actually I've got a friend she lives in a flat just over the road I mean the flat's bigger than mine it's a two bedroom flat it is bigger but it doesn't seem to get warm my flat gets warm and I'm wondering it might be the the soundproof I've got on the on the walls perhaps keeps the heat in a bit so I've always got the window open my, t- my TV lets off a fair bit of heat as well but it's, it's not cold in here very often in my living room anyway and it's let oh did I tell you I had the windows fixed that was the day that I was proper busy and it was too much too much stuff too many people um, yeah I just got a phone call out of the blue because I had reported the windows being broken to the council I got a phone call and a man saying do you want to are you okay for me to come and do them now I said yeah I think I might have said it just like that yeah please and he came and did it and I was yeah it was that day because I was waiting for a food delivery and I was just honestly I had a food delivery neighbour asked me to look after her kid there was visitors knocks at the door it was like just so many things all at the same time well not all at the same time but like sequentially which is the opposite to all at the same time I suppose but he came along and I thought that the kitchen window was broken that one of them is broken but the other one I thought because I struggled to open it but the fact is I don't need to open it now because the other one's fixed but I went to show him that it couldn't open and it opened really easily which is a little bit annoying because I couldn't open it I couldn't close it it kept jamming jamming, 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 jamming I want to jam in with you ooh, ooh. so it was cold in the kitchen because the window was open the whole time it was like hanging open it's not now, it's now been fixed and in the bedroom, in the kitchen rather the window couldn't close either it wasn't hanging open like the bedroom like the kitchen one but the bathroom one was I mean that's the place you least want it to be cold I think apart from any other room that you don't want to be cold but you know this having to get undressed and stuff so I got that fixed and it's not cold in there anymore really the heater needs to check in it needs the heater needs something done to them and the radiator in the hallway is falling apart and I've reported it but I've not heard anything back According to the council, all the flats in this area are going to get new windows and new kitchens. Maybe even new bathrooms, I don't know. So it's all going to happen over time. But there's thousands of properties 
so it could take years. But my neighbour opposite me, he's getting new windows put in soon. They came round to measure up the other day. And a neighbour downstairs is getting a new kitchen. Yeah, they they've they they're gonna be doing a new kitchen for us soon. And my other neighbour over the road, she had a new kitchen put in in the summer. So they are getting around to doing it bit by bit. So that'd be cool. Maybe next year they might do some stuff. Maybe might have done it all. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. They might do, they might not do. It was good to have it done though. To get the windows fixed. So I put it off. Because in the summer it didn't matter. I didn't need the windows to be closed in the summer. It was because it was summer. But once the cold hit, it's like, ooh. Ooh. Because, I mean, last it's been like that for a while as well. Because last year, I would get something, cook it, it'd be out of the oven, or microwave a meal. I put it on the top. And sometimes it'd be almost cold before I got into the living room. Because it was that cold inside the, in the kitchen. Plus I turned the radiator off. Because I'm never in there. I mean I am in there sometimes in the kitchen. But for when I am in there. Other than washing up. Or putting food in the cupboards. It's the oven's on. Or there's some heating. You know something creating heat. So I don't have the radio or radiator on in the kitchen. It's off all the time. The radiator in the bathroom only heats a part of the bottom bit. Doesn't the top doesn't heat. But I've reported it, but I don't know if if they reported it to anyone. What I also need to do is get a get some kind of new bath put in because because of my I know I sound really old I'm not as old as I sound actually I'm much younger than I sound because obviously I've got a super sexy sexy young voice obviously I'm not as I'm not as old as I sound my dear I because I'm on lower back see I'm trying to not get into that zone of moaning about ailments that people some people get into when they get a bit older continuously talking about oh this is wrong with me what's wrong with me let me tell you about my toes let me tell you about my knee and you know just like on and on and on i don't want to do that however <laughs> let me tell you about my back I just, it's a struggle to, I don't have great movement or flexibility with my back, my lower back, due to the arthritis, so that's it, it's not, see I'm not moaning about it, I'm just, just, there's certain facts and it's weird because I'm still fairly strong, not, I'm not super strong, but I've still got some strength. And I can lift stuff, but I just can't bend. I can bend, but it hurts. And so I try to avoid doing much in the way of bending. Which was it's a bit difficult because I got a delivery the other day. Food delivery. And it came in crates. And it's the first time in years... I think that I've had a delivery in crates, like from a supermarket, because normally I get them from Amazon. And Amazon do use uh, Morrison's, so it is a supermarket, but it costs more. But they do deliver in brown paper bags. I don't think the colour is really relevant, but they're in paper bags, so it's minimal bending. 
my veneers are having a bone. The thing is, with the crates, I had to bend over probably 20 times, 15 times, 24 times, I don't know, however many items I had to keep, have to keep bending over twice, bending over, then put it into a bag, and then putting the bag down, it's like, yeah, at the end of it, I just, yeah, I didn't enjoy it, although, financially, it's a much better deal to get stuff directly from the supermarket than from Amazon, because, although I still had to pay a £5 delivery charge, the items were cheaper, everything was cheaper than, you know, I got way more, and there's more choice, because whether it's Tesco or Sainsbury, they have their own brand, and they have sort of really cheap stuff, which, see, because I haven't, I, my friend got some stuff as well, so I ordered stuff for her, and she got some, what did she get? Okay, puffed wheat. Have you seen sugar puffs? They're not called sugar puffs anymore. They're called puffed wheat or something. Now, sugar puffs are one of the most famous breakfast cereals in this country. The sugar puffs are on me. Remember that? And is that the right thing? No. Tell them, oh yeah, honey, that's it, sugar puffs on me. It was just, uh, I don't know, what was that? What was that called? Cornflakes. Not crunchy nut cornflakes, but the other one. Frosted cornflakes or something. The honey's, the sugar's on me. The sugar's on me, or something. Ah, but sugar puffs used to have like a a bear, a bear kind of character saying, "Tell them about the honey money." No, tell them about the honey mummy. So he was the honey monster. I don't know if the honey monster's still involved, or whether he retired, because he's been going a long time. Hope he got a good pension. But they changed the name. So no longer Sugar Puffs. I think they're called... They might be called Honey Puffs. They've, anyway, they changed the name. And my friend thought, you know what? It's going to cost less than half the price to get Sainsbury's home brand. Honey Puff kind of... The, the equivalent, but Sainsbury's home brand. And I said, are you sure? She said, yeah. I said, okay. So she got it. And she said, you probably, do you want to test them? Because you probably won't like them. I said, I don't know. Let's have a go. I've not had any sugar puffs for so quite a while. Probably a couple of years, if not more. And I do occasionally have... In fact, it might have been less than two years. I treat myself. It's not really much for breakfast, though, I found. Because it's sugary and... Yeah. But anyway, my friend, she got this... Home brand... Honey Puffs... And she ate them and said they're nothing like they used to be, not sweet anymore. She chucked a few in my hand. We didn't chuck them, but she poured them into my hand. I ate them and they tasted fine. Because I haven't been eating sugar. So to me, they, they tasted sweet. That story wasn't quite as exciting as I thought it was going to be. I think I misjudged the audience this time. <laughs> the very first time. 
it tasted all right though but i don't know because i try and have very basic breakfast cereal apart from the ready brick which i love and i know it's it might not be the best thing to eat but i do love that and i don't have sugar on any of my breakfast cereals anymore or in my tea I just have sugar cubes, you know, separate as a snack. <laughs> well, if horse, if it's okay for horses, it's got to be alright for me, isn't it? I'm very similar to a horse. I can poo standing up. <laughs> oh dear. Right, what's the next story? Don't, okay, nope. Source code. Heinz Ketchup is catching up with technology because tomatoes for the nation's favourite sauce are now chosen by robots. Oh, robots. I thought it was people called a robot. Since 1876, the fruit going into the famous bottles... <sighs> right. Regardless of the fact that a tomato is a fruit. It's not, is it? It's a vegetable. If it goes into a salad, it's a vegetable. It's a fruit, it's a tomato, it's a fruit. I don't care. We all know that it's not a fruit. Even though it is. Can we just agree? They put stuff in like in that in there, like in the newspaper, almost let's educate people. Let's let them know it's a fruit. It's gonna blow their minds. I don't care. It's a vegetable. And people have such arguments, don't they? Like a whale is a fish. <laughs> I don't care, it's a fish. If you live is it's a fish. It's shaped like a fish. It lives in the sea. It's a fish. It's not like it lives in the sea. So it's an octopus. No. But an octopus isn't shaped like a fish. It doesn't have fins. It doesn't have a tail. It's not shaped. A fish shape. You can't get any more fish shaped than a whale. Okay, it looks more like a submarine. But that's because we copied the whale to make submarines, isn't it? I think. He thinks the he thinks the whale is a fish. <laughs> Dolphins, they're fishes. Right, if a whale's not a fish, well, okay, come on, let's take it bowling. Let's take it to the ice ice rink. Give it an office job. See how long it lasts. It's a fish. Yeah, but it doesn't breathe underwater. No, but it can hold its breath for like 17 hours. You don't need to breathe underwater if you can do that. I wouldn't even need to breathe underwater if I did that. It's like, oh, I just got to pop upstairs for a bit just to get a bit of oxygen. Uh, when have you got to go? There's no hurry. Any time in the next few hours, it'll be fine. Maybe tomorrow is okay. It's just like, for a whale, breathing... It's like us ordering our weekly shopping. You know, you're not worried about eating. Like you've got on a Tuesday, you're going to run out of food on a Friday. So you've got a delivery coming, maybe Friday morning or Thursday evening. On a Tuesday, you're not worried because you've got the delivery coming. And it's the same with whales. They're sitting at the bottom of the ocean, smoking a cigar, watching the latest episode of... <laughs> oh dear, I don't know what would what would a whale watch maybe whale watch maybe they're watching David Attenborough A Shark's Tale maybe they'd like that movie I don't know the thing is if you had a television underground would you still be able to hear underground underwater would you still be able to hear the volume would you better hear it? Or would you need signing? Because we don't know. Maybe whales can sign. They might not be able to sign, but they might be able to read signing. And I can't see how they could actually do the signing themselves. 
but I may might be able to read sign in. And here's a question on the subject of sign in. If someone who does sign in in English, does someone who does sign in in German or French or Russian or you can pick any country in the world where it's a different language, Chinese, do they have, is it the same? Not the universal, but just if it's in their own language, the sign in. Would, would you be able to go to India and sign with someone and they have them understand? Because if that is the case, why aren't we all taught to sign at school from an early age? Like an international... Because there was a whole thing, oh, we, we should have an international language. Signing is an inter can be an international language. See, I've changed the world in one sentence. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, source code, tomato sauce. So this is kind of a a positive, yet maybe not as positive. Ultimately, it's an advert for Heinz ketchup tomato ketchup because it's a because it got a big picture of it and on underneath dollop of ai goes into source oh that's clever i think they used ai to put that on there tomato farm in badajoz ai gadget powered Gadgets at Heinz's Tomato Farm in Badajoz, southwest Spain, works twice as fast as humans and can tell where the fruit is at its juiciest. They even take care of watering, adding nutrients to the soil and protecting crops from extreme weather. It means Heinz can now harvest 50% more tomatoes than ever before and keep our store's shelves permanently stocked. Spokeswoman Monica Souza said, We have a double the yields for improved marketing and farming and blah blah blah. But we've doubled yields through improved farming and a better management of irrigation. My accents are terrible, aren't they? Nutrients, crop protection, soil preparation, and optimised harvesting. Around 600 million bottles of the red stuff are sold in Europe every year. The UK market is worth 172.9 million, with more than 20 million of us buying Heinz ketchup last year. Okay, more farmers are turning to AI and Wimbledon strawberries are now tended by high-tech sensors and a new tool is being developed to predict fruit harvests from photographs. And it continues. The AI domination, the AI takeover continues. Boom, 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 boom. Oh look, Paris Fury's, oh it's uh, Tyson Fury's wife, Paris Fury, celebrates her 35th birthday. Mum of seven party that's, as I've said, you've heard for us, okay. Alright, um, that's just a picture of her wearing a dress, cool. Um, that fight is... Did they say the date for the fight? Cause it's always in a little advert, isn't it? Yep. Prefer, prepares for his fight against Alexandra Usyk on December 21st. I do find it interesting. There's always the little... This little... Uh, little adverts intertwined. What are we looking at here? It's Christmas tree 
Christmas is here and we've teamed up with the Hort with Tim Horton's delicious French vanilla drink to kick start that festive feeling. Tim Hortons, what's Tim Hortons? They're spreading holiday cheer throughout December with love from Tim's. A season of little treats and heartwarming surprises. I have no idea what Tim, I don't even know what Tim Hortons, what is it? Is it coffee? Tim Hortons at, I don't, anyone? I don't know. French vanilla drink. So there's a, go to the front counter or drive through window at your nearest Tim Hortons store. I don't even know what a Tim Hortons store is. I understand what a store is, but what's Tim Hortons, is it? Is it a coffee place? I've got no idea. Uh, uh, uh. All right, there's stuff. What else have we got? Snoop's half baked idea. So this is Snoop Dog. What is he now in his 60s, isn't he? It's kind of weird. It's weird that Snoop Dogg, he was like this big, this bad boy in the 90s, and now he's almost, wow, well, it was just, I had to stop there for a second. Some dogs in the background were proper barking. Really loud. So Vinny joined in. Bless him. Um, so yeah, I think Snoop Dogg wants to be, he's possibly going to be the new, the new judge on MasterChef. Oh, okay. Now what, it's just weird because he was this bad boy in the 90s and now he's, he's always like, I was going to say as cuddly as Bill Cosby, but that's probably not a good example. But you know, kind of that lovable figure that Bill Cosby was in the 90s. Why couldn't you have said a different person? I don't, yeah, I suppose. I trying to think, he's just, he's almost like he's, cool I uh, just it's funny and cool and just loved love a lovable person that's what I meant Beyonce is top of M M ML's Emily's Emily's collaboration wish list it'd be great to get around the piano and make a little something because she has the most beautiful voice Hard to argue with that. She tells me she personifies that female empowerment. Empowerment. One day I'll be able to talk. We were talking about what empowerment we were talking about. We were talking about. I love that she can just change it up because you never want to feel stifled as an artist. So this is Emily. I don't know who Emily is. Who's Emily? Emily. Oh, I've done it again. Right. So it's the other page that I've not got to. Emily, inspired to go it alone. Emily Sundays has been inspired to start her own label by fellow female powerhouse Beyonce, Ray and Nate, Kate Nash. I remember Emily Sunday. She was, had a huge album really really big album and then I mean she's she just it's not like she disappeared it's just she just wasn't around I don't know why 
in fact, it's made me want to listen to her album now. Let me write her name down. Oh, no, I haven't got a pen. Let's have Emily Sabadadabam. Do 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 do. You do 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 do. Right, brilliant. The pen's out. Oh, I got another three. Make a lot of noise. Emily Sandez. This table probably needs screwing to fit it. Because you hear it squeaking. It's weird. My pre love party season. Cory Star Kim has Echo Xmas. Coronation Street's Kimberly Cart Hart Simpson is dreaming of a green Christmas and urging folk. We don't use that. Why are you using the word folk? We don't use that in this country, but hey, they're using it for some reason. Folk to wear second hand clobber to festive parties. The actress thirty seven, mind your own business, thank you. Let's move on. So you gotta do with her what everyone wears at a party. Because she's on telly. I'm now a spokesman for everybody. I I'm gonna teach people. Mew, 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 mew. Stop it. Leave me alone. If I want to, I'll wear what I want to wear at my Christmas party. Okay, I've never been to a Christmas party, but if I ever did go to one, I'm going to wear what I want. Don't you be telling me you should go to the second hand shop. No, they're not called that. They're called charity shops. Anyway, it's not second hand. No, it's pre loved. Shut up. Second hand. flea market you know it's like basically people don't get rid of stuff they like they get rid of stuff they don't want anymore soiled <laughs> maybe not literally but stuff that's damaged or cracked or they just don't like it anymore they don't want it no one gets who gets rid of goods good stuff Or as they say, one person's one person's junk is another person's treasure. No, one person's junk is another person's junk that they can afford. It's basically what what one person can afford to give away, another person might be able to afford to buy. You can't say that. Some of the best things I've ever had have been junk. <laughs> I always thought flea market was because the stuff was so horrible and disgusting. It was literally covered in fleas. That's what I used to think. Until about a month ago. Two. Uh, oh, win double bingo. I work at the, in a second hand shop. I work at a charity shop. It's all good stuff. I'm sure it is. I'm just messing about. Junk. <coughs> Pitbull set to be transformed. A former coal mine could be converted into a quarry extracting millions of tons of limestone. I volunteered in a second hand shop or charity shop. Okay. And they had me sorting out the coat hangers didn't like it so I never went back now I'm not sure if I had the the, the, the correct kind of um, I'm not sure I was embracing the charity mentality but I was in the back for me I wanted to be involved but it was partly to get myself out to see people and I wasn't seeing anyone I was in the back Doing stuff in the back was bigger than the front. And it, it was just boring. The same as when I worked in the... I volunteered in... Oh, here we go. He's going to talk about all the places he volunteered. There's a hero if you look inside his pants. No, I'm not going to say I'm a hero. It's... I... This is just what I generally do genuinely done I volunteered at the not the spa I did, I did volunteer at the soup kitchen twice actually two different towns but that's a separate thing 
kilo. Shit. It was the food bank. Twice as well, actually, there. Because they, they moved. So I was there at the original place and I went to the one that they moved to a bit closer. The thing is, I struggled with the... the physical side of it. Because there's quite a bit of bending. Again, I just, just it's not really for me anymore, the bending over. But I tried to explain to them that I'm more of a, probably be better to someone to be front of house. They could, you know, just to greet people and give them their food. And that would probably be more suitable for me. Because I thought that would get me out of any of the hard work. But it didn't. It really didn't. But I, I quite liked it. I got on very, very well with the lady who worked there, who was in charge, who was a manager. She moved away. But I... So I was with her from... I think probably a couple of months leading up to Christmas in 2014 and then I had some time off because of bereavement and then I just kind of didn't didn't really feel it anymore to be honest but she was lovely she was really nice got on really well with her but yeah she moved yeah Oh, that's right, because that was before it moved to the new place. And when I went back to see if they needed anyone in the new place, he said, no, got enough people, thanks, bye. It's like, okay. Now, I, admittedly, you know, I walked in the front, the man that was there, I didn't, I was offering my services. And, you know, it's, okay, it's, I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting him to serenade me. You know, I wasn't expecting him to sort of stop everything. Wait a minute, to go outside and all these lights come on and sort of shining at me and he's on a microphone saying, Look at this man, he's volunteered. He's he's volunteered, everyone come over and worship his feet. I didn't expect that. Acknowledgement and just a mild bit of, oh, kindness maybe a little bit, but it's like, no. I, it's like, had no time to even, it didn't even look at me. It didn't even, I mean, I was dressed as um, Christmas tree fairy. But that's that's besides the point. I actually had a, the top of a Christmas tree sticking out of my bum, but he couldn't see that from where I was standing. But the tiara and little wand. But what am I talking about? Why do I say stuff like this? Right, Colleen Nolan. Colleen Nolan is embracing being single again after splitting from her partner. Uh, so, why are you telling us? Right, what's it? Is that her daughter? Hmm. If that is her daughter, she don't half look like, not Colleen, but one of her sisters. One of Colleen's sisters, because they was, um, were they Boney M or something, weren't they? Blimey. Daughter Chiara. She looks more like one of her sisters than her. I used to fancy Colleen. When I was a kid. Like, literally, I was a kid and she's she's 59, so she's only a few years older than me. But she was in a group with her sisters. I think it was Abba. And 
they they were quite big in the UK and I think in Ireland and maybe Europe. And one of the songs was uh, was it? I'm in the mood for dancing, feel like romancing. Do 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 night we I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood. Let's dance. Come on and dance. Ooh, dance. Ooh, 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 dance. Come on and dance. Oh, on this day in 1975 in the UK, Bohemian Rhapsody was number one by Queen. Number two, You Sexy Thing by Hot Chocolate. Number three, The Trail of the Lonesome Pine featuring Chill Willis. Laurel and Hardy with the Aviation Boys featuring Chill... What? That's a, that's a lot of um, words. Money Honey by Bay City Rollers. What year was it? 1975. So I'll be five. All Around My Hat by Steely Span. Nana is the saddest word. Nana, the stylists. Uh, money, honey. Money, honey. The, the base city rollers. It's no money. How we don't honey anymore. Um, the old heart, this old heart of mine. This old heart of mine. And then I see the sun. It got a do to we. I am sailing, I am sailing, this old heart of mine, ah, this old heart of mine, 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 this old heart of mine. So that's Rod Stewart, Show Me You're a Woman by Mud. I'm not sure how that would go down these days, that title. I think that was, um, show me you're a woman, a woman, woo woman. Show me you're a woman, a woman, 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 woman. And then let's, let's, tw let's twist again. And the twist, chubby checker. So let's twist again, the twist. Okay, let's twist again. Like we did last summer, oh, let's twist again. Like we did last year, oh, do you remember when things were really humming? Oh, twist again, twist and time is you. And then the twist, do the twist. I just whistled then. And number 10 is Imagine. When was that the first time he released Imagine in 1975? So I wonder if it was before it got to number one or after it got to number one. Questions, qu answers on a postcard. An officer who tried to... Be, to uh, Dick finds Luke a Lux, whatever a Lux is, a Lux... Roman villa. Detectorists helped unearth a luxury Roman villa with an out outdoor pool. A later full scale excavation of the site found a 35 meter house, columns, mosaics, and a bathhouse. Dr. Dennis Weldon of Tefont Archaeology which ran the dig in Wilshire's Chalk Valley, said the owners were probably a local elites who were clearly trying to tie themselves into quite a Roman way of living. The finds will be analysed, is it analysed or analysed, then moved to Salisbury Museum. Um, okay, right. We wish you a con. OAP gets. Okay. Almond snowballs. Oh, it sounds nice, doesn't it? These are cakes. 
you know, even if I can see a picture of a cake, and even if I know that it's horrible, well, like, you know, for, for my taste buds, it's something that I find horrible, not very nice. I still want to eat it when I see a picture. I still want it. Mm, 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 nom, 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 nom. Like coconut. I don't, I don't really... I don't cherish coconut. I don't... I don't really have strong emotional feelings towards coconut. I find it hard to swallow. That's the main thing, really. It's like one of those things you chew and chew and chew. It's, it's just... It, it is really just... I guess... I'm trying to think of something that would be a similar kind of thing that you chew. I suppose it's like trying to eat a packet of a packet of crackers without any water. It's just you need some water, you need liquid. Even though the taste that comes I love the taste of coconut. The kind of milky, t- I love the cat, I do, I genuinely do. In fact, I've never been so excited about telling you the truth before. But I can't swallow this, well I can swallow it, because I have, but I just, I'm just like, I'm chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing and it just gets, it seems a little bit pointless. Although, not that it's going to make any difference to my life. Apparently, coconut is can be a bit of an aphrodisiac. Did you know that? Yep. Um, personally, it's of no... It, it wouldn't help me, but... Because I'm impotent. By the way, if anyone's interested in dating me, oh, 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 don't worry about <laughs> the impotence. Honestly, just just get in contact. Fiona Duffy, Duffy has tried over 100 alcohol-free alternatives. Here she reveals her festive faves. Um, I don't really see the point in alcohol alternatives. Really. I just never have. And I had a bit of an alcohol issue a few years ago. And I just I just don't drink. I don't know. It just seems a bit like, what's the point in buying something that looks like alcohol in a container that looks like it has alcohol, like a, a wine bottle, but it's not wine in there. And it looks like wine, but it's not wine. And even might taste like wine, but it's not wine. It just seems a bit like you really... I don't know. Tempting yourself, almost. It's... Yeah, I mean, that's... It's kind of like... I don't know, trying to get someone to to stop. I don't know. I know what I want to say, but I better be careful because it's, it's probably controversial, but it just seems a bit strange, just to me. It's probably really good, and I have had alcohol-free stuff, but I know they sell it in the pubs and stuff as well, as well for people that are driving. It amazes me. You know, we've got such weird laws over here for driving. And in America, all that testing people, stopping them and getting them to walk on a line and do somersaults and balance on their head and doing the splits and recite Shakespeare backwards, things like that. It's like just breathalyze them straight away and you'll know within like what 
30 seconds, whether or not they're over the limit, and then arrest them. And if they're not over the limit on a breathalyzer, let them go. It's done. You know, three, four minutes, not an hour. Getting them to do like written tests, and now you need to swim five lengths of the swimming pool in 10 minutes. Like, what's this got to do with swimming? Well, it's got a lot to do with swimming, hasn't it? That ruined that, didn't I? What's this got to do with whatever we were talking about? You don't know what we were talking about? I wasn't listening. Do you ever talk about something and someone asks you to repeat and you realise you weren't actually even listening to yourself? It's weird. That. I can't repeat it to you because I wasn't listening. Sorry. What do you mean you wasn't listening? I wasn't really taking much notice. I was just talking for the sake of it. What do you mean? You don't talk for the sake of it. <laughs> you clearly haven't met me before. Retail therapies. Look at this. Like to feel as if you've done the hard work yourself, but still want someone to hold your hand in the kitchen a little. I don't know if I've ever, ever had anyone hold my hand in the kitchen. Why would you hold someone's hand in the kitchen? Especially if they're cooking food. It's a bit unhygienic, isn't it? And it also limits them. Limits their movement. What if they need to do two things? What if they... I mean, if they need to make an omelette, they need both hands, because you have, obviously you have to juggle the eggs first, don't you? And you might say, oh, well, would you want to juggle the eggs? Well, providing you do it over the counter, you can then find out how many you can do, because if you drop, if you drop them, it don't matter, because you just use them. See? But you can't just juggle legs any old time because otherwise it'll be a waste. If you know you're going to need eggs and you might need like three or four eggs because you're making a an egg thing which needs four eggs then you can just practice your juggling in the shell. It's easier in the shell. And you can kind of... And if you drop them it don't matter. See? You can make the most of the, the smallest, the smallest things in life can end up being wonderfully exciting. Oh, this is an advert for Hello Fresh's Christmas recipe boxes delivered pre portioned ingredients and step by step instructions from just £315, no, £3.15 per person. The rosemary roast chicken with pigs in blankets, festive gravy and all trimmings is available until January the 3rd. Oh, go away. It's a puzzle. Oh, let's have a look. What is the... I need to stop. I need to take my hand off of that. The, the table, that is. It keeps squeaking. Plan your retirement. How can I plan my retirement? I'm too young. Alexa invests eight billion in AI. So Amazon has increased its investment in Anthropic, an artificial intelligence startup, to eight billion, following an initial investment made in September last year. The company is integrating Anthropic's technology into its cloud services and plans to embrace, no, to embed Anthropic's chatbot Claude into its Alexa voice command platform. So I know a little bit about Anthropic and 8 billion is not, in AI terms, there's not a huge amount of money these days, which is ridiculous. It's true though. Did you know that one of the biggest companies in the entire world and one of the only companies to be worth over a trillion dollars is NVIDIA? It's the company that makes the chips, the computer chips. Well, makes computer chips, not all the computer chips, but the, the main ones that AI uses. <laughs> Uh, 
Mummy of All Cruises is an advert for a cruise. I'm guessing something to do with mummies. I've never been in a hot air balloon. That would make more sense if you could see the screen. There's a picture of hot air balloons. Riding over the Valley of the Kings. Yeah, I don't know if I'd fancy a hot air balloon or not. Maybe maybe I should. Let's give it a go. He's got the power. Grand Theft Hamlet. That's another movie in some cinemas now. Rumours is another one. Unstoppable. Okay. Reef. Th what is that? Okay, so they're just some TV sh and some movies. Football Scout Monty reveals all. Monty Montgomery, Rough Diamond. How a nightclub boss found football's future stars. <sighs> Ooh, the perfect gift this Swiftmas. It's Taylor Swift celebrating a momentum... Mo momental, mo monumental. No, I know how to speak. <laughs> Honest, but it's really small letters. Monumental year. It's part of OK Magazine Christmas Collector's Edition. Oh, that's nice. Kelly Holmes, shortlisted as a Sports Book Award and for the William Hill Sports Book of the Year, two thousand and twenty-four. Oh, I heard, oh, no, some of these books I don't like, Little, li, Littler Told, Littler, don't give it the large one on the red carpet, darts legend Phil Taylor has told Luke Littler to snub BBC's sports personality of the year gala to focus on becoming world champion. In a seasonal address from his Potteries Kingdom, the power warned 17 year old Littler there was too much at stake to hang out on the red carpet and said, If I was his manager, I'd tell him, Sorry, you're not going, and record a video message. Yeah, but would you have done that when you were 17, though, Mr. Phil Taylor? Would you? Would you? He's a teenager. Let him have some fun. And besides, he's also really famous. And to be a darts player and be famous in this day and age is quite a... a, a it's a feat. Because darts isn't the sport it used to be. is isn't as popular like... Yeah, but then Phil Taylor, Phil Taylor was he was he a, a snooker player? Sixteen-time world world champion. I don't know. I think just just leave him be, leave Littler alone. I mean, he's seventeen. If he wants to have fun, let him have fun. I was lucky enough to be voted sports personality run up in 2010 and I did attend the event but I was 50 years old and I'd won 15 world titles by then. If I was Luke, I'd record a video message. So you did attend. He'd, the thing he says, do you want to hang out with a few celebrities on a red carpet or do you want to win 500 grand? Mr. Phil Taylor, are you not aware that Mr. Littler, the 17-year-old darts genius, 
that 500 grand is not going to be much money compared to the amount of money he's going to earn being a celebrity, doing adverts, being on TV shows, possibly hosting a TV show. He's a celebrity. Let him embrace it. Let him have fun. Maybe he doesn't want to be a darts player all his life. Leave him be. Yeah, I think you should go. Go and enjoy yourself. Let's face it. All he has to do to win 500 grand, he can make more than that just by writing a book. Writing a book about, you know, all getting into a relationship with a famous, another famous person, become a power couple. Yeah. I talk like I know what I'm on about. I don't know. Can Lewis arise to the challenge? <sighs> Damien Lewis, not Damien Lewis, Lewis Hamilton. After 12 years, 6 world titles, 245 races, 84 victories and 78 poles. The 39-year-old brings the curtain down on an incredible Silver Arrows career at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Right. Next season, the seven-time seven time world champion will start... Didn't it just say that he's won the world title six times? Now it's saying he's a seven-time world champion. Right, I just want to find out what my star sign is going to be. Not my, I know what my star sign is, but what my star are. Because it's, it's good to know for the future. But to be fair, are the star signs on a, on a Sunday? Is that for the week ahead? Because they do the star signs every day, don't they? Is it just for the week ahead or is it for just for the day? Because the day is nearly over. I mean, it's, what's the time? It's six minutes past seven. Pum. I don't know. I'm trying to go to the... Come on. This is... This is a long... Come on, give me the star signs. Give me... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Virgo. Virgo by name. Virgo by nature. It's no fun having to redo work you thought was finished. Starting from scratch will throw off all your plans for the week. The boundless energy of a colleague will also disrupt your rhythm. Oh God, that sounds horrible. I don't really have colleagues, but just people. <laughs> it's no having to redo what you thought was finished. Starting from scratch. Oh, blimey. No. I think I'll be a Virgo instead. Kids in your world will be buzzing with energy. No, don't want that one. What about Libra? Consider the word balance as you organise your time. A mix of social activities. No thanks. Uh, it's a good idea, Scorpio. Good idea to check your money situation to work out how to start. Oh, problems with bills. No. Sagittarius. Your days could turn out to be more chaotic. No, I don't want that one either. Thanks. Capricorn. Your social life may have gone off the boil, but that's about to change. Yep, I'm a Capricorn this week. You will soon have no reason to complain about this part of your life. Your days will be filled with fun group activities. No, thank you. I don't want group activities. I mean, they said group activities. Huh? Aquarius, I'll be Aquarius. What you want is... What you want is to maintain a happy atmosphere in your relationships and friendships. Just be careful not to express your strong opinions about ideas others are suggesting you might... Uh, why has it always got to involve pe other people? And we Aries. Rushing into decisions about your career or education could be regretted later. Mm. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I'm going to go now. I'm going to go. So I managed to get through one newspaper, pretty much. 
Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself, because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I, sometimes I'll find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again, like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that pressed the play button this was in the days of CD players press the play button in fact it might have even been a tape tape recorder I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic. 
relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now and as you become aware of 
your hands. I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you 
you breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart time seems to just Rip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment
completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further. 
く and deeper. Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck. Feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Deeply There's a sense of peace Spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. Yeah. 
your stomach. in your stomach your back Notice how relaxed you now feel in the whole of your back. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body.
tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers, all the way to your lower back. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more.
joy. The space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
Peaceful energy have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And 
things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And to give yourself a rest. Giving yourself permission to take some time off. And to allow your body to relax. And allow your mind to slow down. Which in turn releases the tension, any stresses that you had in your body. It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy. Which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can 
can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Completely moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth, and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focus.
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and even though we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine, Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose, they're already feeling calm, and that feeling 
those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. so soft and gentle, so smooth, and calm, and the feeling shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation not just traveling deeply into your muscles but also relaxing bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing. so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message. You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gentle Focusing now on 
a sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. tips to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees
muscles and just shins completely I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step repre 
represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. Your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find to do is just drift off to sleep, and if that's what you want, then just allow yourself to do that, now focus in on your eyes, going to begin counting down from ten down to one, right now, ten,
cuerpo. So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
You are counting down from ten to one. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? You could try it again. But this time I'll go a bit slower. This time as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down 10 Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down so I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some. TLC, a bit of love shown, a bit of acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Or it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. you can still have that attention on your thighs maybe notice how your thighs feel maybe notice that they are relaxing more deeply and as you focus now bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us, supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And it's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. It's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. Fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. doing the same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are, truly a gift, because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight Regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go. And my toes clap. I'm so happy. legs really are amazing and I know that talk about, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, but they deserve to relax deeply. deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely your legs really can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles are just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. to one and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed ten nine eight seven So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space this time to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep, depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting you can also if you choose stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process Gradually relaxing each. 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Six, slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more Starting with number seven.
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing Focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands Thank you. 
Jin again. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and 
anxiety, tension. Just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we do now. sense of peacefulness which comes to you very quickly because ultimately it's just a feeling a feeling of comfort it's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. where you're not trying to please anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate you are and that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you and that's also a place where you can actually Feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins. Traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. 
things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy. 
permission to let go because that's all it is it's just deciding to let go and when you press the play button on my recordings you have given permission for my voice to relax you when you press that play button you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends those changes within you Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself and this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety comfort calmness This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. And you can just say stop. Negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. 
to and that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. T. 
This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair in your body is filled with feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also by 
pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission to my body and my mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and your mind to relax. drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on a different part of your body, and you find yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep, and that's the last you remember.
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now, they may seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if it's mixed together. Focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Now focus on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. physical sensations in your feet and ankles.
body feels. Noticing how your mind feels now. go letting go letting go letting go letting start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I want to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. 
just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin get accustomed to it realize that you're safe and it's all good it's all fine and I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is and just allow our knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders moving to the muscles of your shoulders And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. 
just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. down your arms you do one arm at a time starting with your right arm and what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you I want it to still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly at the same time. Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, 
because he's intimate. You can feel nice. You can feel safe. same with your left arm, exactly the same, massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist, stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers. Massaging the palm of your left hand. You can feel so, so relaxing. So comforting. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again with all the big beam top and between your shoulders and then your neck going back massaging that area again but this time moving downwards making a downward stroke to the middle of your back working from the outside Massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back. The parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want. a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back, you can do that a few times, sometimes people use the knuckle or the 
you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage. It gives you really feeling. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. But it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massaging that area up 
to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. as gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from Pretty much underneath your arm area, really. To your spine. And then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your, back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, gently but firm enough so they don't tickle, and just allow the pl 
pleasure do you get from having a feet massage to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet the bottoms of your feet your sides your arches your heel you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle stretching your toes gently massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers each one individually moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing starting with the top of the thighs working the back of the thighs and the sides massaging deeply and gently that whole area working all the way down This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently moving down your ankle and into your feet massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down 
your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. It feels quite a large area. As you move from one side to the next. where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest, Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart, massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, from just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side. Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. Round 
to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around the belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles, massaging them, I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin. Gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet, and then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go, enjoy process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from Touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling. Massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred
going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. Each time I say a number, you can imagine that candle in front of you, and I'd like you to actually physically <sighs> gently blow that candle out. just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just yourself to be even more and more relaxed and if you need to sleep you'll also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more to them after a while and even though there may be background sounds where you are you be aware of those sounds just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds forest the pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes and there's the odd plane that goes by there's been traffic and trains in the distance but none of that seems important Whatsoever. The more candles you blow out, the less 
simple and we're going to start by introducing the first candle which is a Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. Starting. Eight. 
to find.
esse.
Isso.
anxious thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind. And your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. do give your permission and you give the say so you can say okay it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows it's all right the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair maybe you kick your shoes off and that oh, feels so nice knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour feels blissful and just by sitting there like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind will prepare Can just 
just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go and really breathe and relax and see more and more as failure. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when we're stressed and we're not, may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when we allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. your nose, into your lungs, 
breathing out any excess feeling or tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind let you know that feeling completely calm loose and relaxed really is body and mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling the brain with deep, concentrated
Body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in the 
this moment. So let's start off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. a little bit, opening and closing the hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. And then turning on your ankles, moving your feet around, making your turns gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscles, the changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes. Scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs. Front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. And noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Moving your focus. Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck. They also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus slowly on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards if you're looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you're 
the sensations of physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your ears, the palms and the biceps and between your elbow and your shoulders. So focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and then now just tensely, but very, very gently. Putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms. It's just so deeply getting more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Noticing as you gently, very gently, and slowly tighten the muscles in your neck here. Notice how the tops of your arms are feeling. Just above your forehead. As you are able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so you can get more in tune with how
want to include the size of your problem because what size is very much relative. Because muscles or some neurons in which you are repairing are connected to buttocks.
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretched It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. make up the larger movements, which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. Whether pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of the arms, the all the internal parts of the arms, the veins. Just 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. May not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing Still not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, you can tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back. And of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently. seem to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. chest. Just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now.
so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to a chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. And of course if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Feeling with whatever feeling there is in your chest. So I notice that I focus on my chest. I, I feel it in my my back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. Yeah. And then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And then it feels... It feels okay. little bit of pain in my right chest, just a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas back. It looks quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, when you do tense a muscle, relaxes way more than it would normally. And you have to learn to be able to do that. And if 
and doing it is a uh, machine to repair a part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself. And you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. You have nothing to think about. You're just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slowly down, as your body body, maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom, you know, start maybe to as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving them there, kind of like in a, an escape pod, in a spaceship movie, a space movie, you know, and that's that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free. And you continue.
listening to my voice as the mind started to imagine something different my being started to almost move into some unhabitable numb state and then you become aware of your voice again and you don't know 
physical sensation. Most life is a magnet outside of your head, sucking the tension and the stress and all your normal feelings that you don't like, sucking them out through your skull. full of fresh air, place where you can stretch, it's almost as if if you go down into four and three, your mind is expanding with this This is something that you can do yourself in your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just
seen and physically feel as I go down to point three two one my stress and tension is relieved and I can just let the sun out so I'm just focusing on my fingertips and then I feel a little bit tighter time I'm going to feel relief of tension and stress and my anxiety a bit more here breathing easing just leaving these other feelings as they as just releasing Hold this back and I'm able to just let these feelings just be not surrounded by them but in my whole world I can feel tension in my body and then my mouth is just releasing and then I am and you may notice that you start to just get more relaxed as sense of calmness 
Like, you know the kind of math that's got to get in there to solve this equation. Let's take the sum of the let's see area of the domain and the various functions as y bar. So y bar r is any function that we want to make the area less than or equal to the area of the domain before that of the sum. And so the only function we can use to calculate the area of the domain is the area of the domain. 
Welcome to Anna Cup Vienna. Here we go, Alex. I want to explore the game. What it feels like to have not played it. The sound of the game playing on this thing. I'm not forcing myself, I'm just giving myself it is a command that I can actually like turn on my game and play it. Um, so this game's going to get started up. Now, I need to know how to play this game. I think I have set it in the same time as my Deluxe Lite game. Um, so I need to be gentle because it's kind of some of my stuff is a Test it out. I think what we've tested is we will test this stuff out more. I need to invent more of these ideas. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of neat. Um, I like that. Sets active and sampling further down. start by just we'll play just a rough game I can also turn the hand up but just turn the hand to the left let's just say relax and just focus on the game and keep it safe and the hand to the right and we'll give our hand a shake and I think if you actually do it by focusing and imagining that your hand is a pillow that you can like kind of walk towards so talking to your hand and just saying relax Turn your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. Let's just say in the same way, relax. Now find the right part of that eye. Now I might say red, but you you might say red or black. You know, you, you might say it differently.
start focusing.